Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's um, it's a it's a great pleasure to invite Professor Ashwini Kumar to uh, give the colloquium talk this afternoon. Ashwini is a dear friend. Um, more importantly, uh, for the uh, for the reasons for having him with us on the occasion, um, he is a, a political scientist at the Center for Policy, Habitat, and Human Development, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Uh, he's written a book. Uh, called Community Warriors, State Peasants and Private Caste Armies in Bihar. He's also writing a book on the Biharis, uh, which is part of a series of uh, fascinating cultural portraits of language, culture, communities in the country uh, that Aleph is publishing. He is also co-editor of a book that was published in 2009 called Global Civil Society, Poverty and Activism. And another book uh, he has co-edited called Migrants, Mobility and Citizenship in India, forthcoming Routledge this year. Um, something that the bio note that you've seen does not tell you is that he's also a poet, a fascinating poet. Uh, an anthology of his poems called Banaras in the Other is something that I would urge you to um, lay your hands on um, to get a sense for um, his, you know, the other persona. But I suppose I shouldn't, you know, make it seem like they're two separate things. The poet, there is poetry in his social science imagination as well. And that's something he's been very um, committed to evolving. Um, um, his talk today is uh, titled Studying Last Mile Welfare in the Districts of India. This is based on research that is done over the last 10 years. Um, this will also appear as a book shortly. Uh, and uh, after Professor Ashwini Kumar's talk, um, we can take questions. Please key in your questions in the comments box, and uh, we, you know, we'll have about forty-one minutes for the Q and A. Um, Ashwini, it's all yours now. Uh, thank you, Professor, Professor Chandan Gorda, for giving a very generous uh, and a poetic introduction. Uh, something, <laughs> something you know, uh, you know, from a from a professor. You know, Gauda, who himself uh, is multifaceted uh, and widely known for not just sociology, but also his contribution to art, literature, and aesthetics. Uh, we are blessed with his friendship and contributions to, uh, you know, thinking about India in many ways. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy and very happy because Ajim Premji is also, you know, part of Chandan, where we have, you know, uh, part of our sequel to Community Warriors, you know, my research grant has been supported by Ajit Premji. So I'm also under obligation to come to you and speak about the work, perhaps, you know, next year or after next year, uh, we will come back to that work too. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Gorda. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a very structured 40, 45 minute presentation on, on the title, studying, uh, you know, last mile welfare in the districts of India. And uh, and, and then we will have a queen. Uh, so uh, I'm going to share a screen and uh, uh, is here. And uh, let me see how it's a little tricky. This Uh, Professor Gowda, I will require some uh, some 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 help with uh, uh, PPT because I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, since uh, 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 I wanted to show you the PPT, but let me let me just work and see again if it works. Uh, I can't see anything happening here. Uh, Praveen, if you are around, uh, can you help me? I'm selecting, you know, Praveen, I'm selecting screen here, but uh, I can't see. Yeah, got it. Got it, Praveen. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you can see my screen here. Uh, studying last mile welfare in the districts of India. Before I make the presentation, um, a few disclaimers, you know. Uh, 
what i have done here it is it is part of my evolving manuscript uh, and also uh, a major article coming out of this work uh, titled last mile welfare in india the work that i have done covers almost 10 years of my experiences in terms of you know observing implementation and monitoring of nrga in the country i began uh, you know observing nrga when i joined central employment guarantee council in 2009 so from 2009 to 2019 so you can see almost 10 years of my works i am going to present here a small sample you know secondly a disclaimer that uh, the work does not represent any state government or district government or any central government agency or any data from them see uh, the work is also based on my own reflection and reflexivity you know based on the way i have looked at the field and uh, observed the practices uh, governance practices of implementing welfare policy in the country in various parts of the country so with these uh, disclaimers uh, i would like to speak about uh, uh, studying last mile welfare in the districts of india uh, in the in the very short abstract uh, uh, so that the audience get a feel of what i'm going to present uh, over time over last 10 years i have covered more than you know 36 37 districts in almost 22 states of india so here in this presentation today for you i have taken only six case studies across six states and my claims are two you know so you can see in the abstract that i'm presenting before you uh, what i'm trying to do using official statistics welfare registers and what i call ethnographical material collected from implementation of mg narega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act hereby i would call them only nrga or narega since you are familiar with that from six districts across indian states and what the key claim here in my talk today and uh, the big uh, contribution that i am thinking in terms of welfare programs studying welfare programs in the districts of india is following that under what conditions the capacity of last mile bureaucracy matters for the performance of poor, pro poor welfare programs so theoretically what i'm trying to do here that i'm trying to challenge a conventional idea that only a strong autonomous state succeeds in implementing welfare programs so on the contrary you know based on my experiences of uh, monitoring monitoring mg narega in various parts of the country the claim that i'm making here is that effective policy implementation can occur in the peculiar environment of relatively low capacity last mile bureaucracies so that's the claim that i'm making and and hopefully and this claim shifts our attention to the understudied relationship between the capacity of last mile bureaucracy and welfare outcomes in india so here there are four you know analytical puzzles that i'm sharing with you and some of the terms you know again my, my you know um, what i'm trying to suggest here is part of a longest debate uh, and i have presented at various places uh, over over the decade uh, uh, you can you can search it and you can read uh, uh, papers you know in various places where i have presented uh, these ideas you know the ideas of polymorphic welfareisms and variable state capacity so the claim that i am making here will become much more clearer when you look at my analytical puzzles what i call analytical puzzles you know i have already explained the conditions of the capacity of local state or last mile bureaucracy you know rather than using the term local state i am using the term last mile bureaucracy it will become fairly obvious to you when we go to the case studies secondly i am also looking at uh, what explains the prevalence of multiple welfare trajectories or what i call polymorphic welfare regimes in the districts of india rather than you know just singular welfare trajectory why some is, some districts in india have performed better at implementing social welfare policy than others and finally do differences in local political regimes and forms of associational politics influence what i call heterogeneous welfare outcomes at sub national level in india so some of the theoretical arguments you know i will i will present a very stylized uh, uh you know uh, a description here you know what i call a stylized presentation here because it's a, it's a quite a huge material and when professor 
Gauda reached to me. I, I told him that, look, you know, I'm going to present a small sample. You know, I hope that's enough for, for the audience and the students and the faculty and my colleagues in various parts of the country to understand and appreciate, you know, what's going on in this area of welfare literature. So if you look at, uh, if you look at um, what is called, uh, you know, um, the state capacity. So my, my, my study is based on a state capacity and understanding a state capacity in differential context, you know. And that is why you will find in my presentation, the terms that I'm using is dispersed autonomy, uneven capacity, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So if you look at, you know, what I what I'm going to talk about is the implementation of MG Narega from the districts of India. You know, you are familiar that MG Narega is a district based program, you know, and uh, from the district, uh, it goes to the, you know, uh, really bottom and the grassroots. Uh, but the district in the sense of key bureaucratic variable you know, is the bureaucratic nodal point, you know, it's a bureaucratic veto point, uh, which is very important for studying welfare programs, you know. And I'm also looking at what uh, my professor and mentor also, Professor Randi Kothari, used to say, politicization, you know. I'm looking at this idea of politicization that really becomes the driving force for redistributive politics and subsequently realization of social rights in various parts of the India. The methods uh, or method, what I call in the district level research, those who are doing district level research, uh, I think would appreciate uh, the kind of methodology I'm presenting here. It's, it's neither qualitative nor quantitative. In fact, it's a very hybrid uh, heterogeneous methodologies or what I call methods. So I'm using official statistics like MG Narega, MIS, observations, interviews, and also stylized ethnographical vignettes of MG Narega performance in six districts uh, in the states of West Bengal, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Bihar. So you can see, you know, south, north, east, west, you know, coming together here to explain the heterogeneous performance of welfare regimes and varied, and varied capacity of the local state or last mile bureaucracy. Why research on the last mile welfare? That's very important to understand, you know, something understudied, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, what I call meta research, meta research on welfare state, uh, you know, is largely either at the state level or at the national level or at the global level. You know. But if you look at, you know, grassroots welfare research, uh, it's primarily, you know, driven by uh, social workers and social activists you know, in, in, in the disciplines like political science, uh, sociology, anthropology and economics. Uh, there is not much on last mile welfare, you know at the grassroots you know what's happening so what i'm trying to do i'm give I'm, I'm trying to offer you through the analysis of case studies six case studies a comparative assessment you know a comparative comparative assessment and the reason that i choose districts are three a at the district level that the district is a very old you know variable here you know, you're familiar with the colonial system and also you know pre-colonial era when district became very important in a different way so district is the level where politics around Ibdinarega plays out because the district program officer, who is often the district magistrate or DC, a senior IS officer in the bureaucratic system and the hierarchy. So he's the you know guy. So that's very important to understand you know why the last mile bureaucrat is important here. And secondly, also choosing district as the unit of analysis, uh, we get a sense of cultural and a spatial construction of the last mile bureaucracy. You know. So how people perceive the local state, how their understandings are shaped by encounters with the state process processes, and how the last mile bureaucracy or officials affect the lives of the citizen at the grassroots, you know, and especially poor people. Thirdly, and probably the most important, in a country characterized by fragmented, what I call polymorphic welfare regimes, you know, rather than a unitary single welfare state, a district level focus makes it easier to capture the dispersal of a state capacity. It's very important for us to understand, you know, why there are different outcomes in 640 districts, you know. So why this puzzle, you know? And I'm trying to explain this puzzle in terms of, you know, Migdal's idea, Joel Migdal's idea of integrated and dispersed domination across multiple civils of state society engagements at the grassroots. You know? 
Since uh, I have very limited time, uh, only 45-50 minute time to present the material, what I will do that I will skip the theoretical part and the conceptual part, uh, and, and then I will focus more on empirical and uh, qualitative and and uh, ethnographic narrative. So six districts that I have chosen uh, from my large study here is Jalpaiguri, Bengal, uh, you know, Thiruvannamalai, Tamil Nadu, Bagalkot, Karnataka, Sione, Madhya Pradesh, Nagaur, Rajasthan, and Gaya, Bihar. And I have selected, you know, districts one per state here for your convenience so that you can understand variation in output criteria, average days of performance. If you are familiar with NRG performance indicators, then you would appreciate here that why I have looked at major indicators, you know, rather than all, you know, multiple various indicators, you know. And secondly, I have also looked at the innovation, you know, in a, in a, initiated by the district administration, you know. Since 2009 and 10, I had been involved with, uh, you know, various innovations as part of a committee constituted by central government in the rural development ministry of the government of India. And I've also looked at uh, what we call equity index, you know, based on participation of disadvantaged groups such as SC and ST. And then, uh, you know, I will present you, as I have already told you, ethnographical narratives, uh, uh, you know, a kind of rapid, uh, I call it a rapid, you know, or stylized ethnographical narratives. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presentation, you know, rather than presenting a, a primarily a statist view or a societal view, I'm trying to bring together a state and society. That's again, you know, those who are familiar with the Bavarian idea of uh, a state would appreciate that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at, you know, as the literature points out, uh, uh, your uh, different types of welfare regimes uh, at the state, but I'm looking at, uh, you know, bringing together a state and society at the district level, at the grassroots level. So what I'm trying to suggest here that neither is strongly autonomous nor infrastructural enough state. You know, uh, if you look at the idea of state that I'm trying to problematize here, when you work at the district level or the block level, you just you just you get the first shock of your life that it's not what we have been taught in the classroom. You know, it's not the state capacity that we are familiar with. It's very different. You know, six in the forty districts in the country uh, with uneven capacity. Uh, with different kinds of resources and incentive structures available in these districts. So what I'm claiming here as compared to what has come from the status literature, you know, like Theda Scott, Wolf, Charles, still and so on, so forth, you know, and including the Marxist autonomous thesis of the state, you know, really autonomy thesis. It doesn't work here in the districts of India. So neither strongly autonomous nor like Michael Mann's idea of infrastructural, you know, state uh, operates uh, in various districts of India or various parts of India. Therefore, my material challenges the conventional thesis that only strong autonomous state power succeeds in implementing welfare programs. So what I'm trying to look at, you know, I'm trying to look at, you know, how, you know, state and civil society, how the structure of the, you know, civic uh, society matters in influencing or structuring or determining welfare outcomes in the, in the, in the districts. Of India. So this is again a broad claim, you know, revising the notion of the capacity of the state. I look forward to that in my Q&A and I will, you know, will be, I will be in more, you know, giving more detailed answer if possible there. And I'm looking at also, you know, the evidence that I've collected from the districts uh, points to points to a synergy between the last mile bureaucracy and the local society, the local society. And that is what I call, you know, the structure of the local civic society. That's here. You can see I'm trying to look at, you know, how welfare outcomes are structured here, you know, so you can see see the flow chart, you know, autonomy of last mile bureaucracy and then the democratic process from below, you know, uh, through party party based uh, mobilizations or or mobilization by social movements and social groups and it is here you can see the welfare outcomes you know so the heterogeneous welfare outcomes in various districts of india can be you know explained by looking at this correlation you know stylized correlation that i presented before So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to uh, give you a sense of your uh, 
and the capacity and autonomy of uh, last mile bureaucracy you know last mile bureaucracy is, is still uh, you know those who are uh, familiar with the, you know the works of uh, akhil gupta and others you know ferguson and anthropologists and sociologists you know working on on the districts in india you know, from the discipline of anthropology uh, less in political science and and sociology or uh, perhaps absent in economics uh, so so here uh, you know the last mile bureaucracy what is this idea of the last mile bureaucracy you know uh, last mile bureaucracy i'm looking at uh, more in terms of elusive porous and mobile boundaries between the state and society blurring the rigid distinction between bavarian administrative efficiency and inefficiency you know so it doesn't matter much you know if you look at weber's ideal types and when you look at uh, you know district welfare outcomes or you know sub district level welfare outcomes at the block level or at the gp level you know and for us you know very important uh, those who work on district level welfare outcomes you know what i have gained from my decadal experience uh, that in implementing welfare programs the national level bureaucrats uh, or the state level bureaucrats are not the real player you know although the literature you know the large literature presents them as you know in terms of uh, in terms of like master you know in terms of principal agent you know but here when you look at you will find that so called state level bureaucrats bureau, bureaucrats or front line bureaucrats or officers they matter the most uh, in in causing you know heterogeneous outcomes in the districts of india so that's that's i'm looking at uh, you know uh, even even the so called bureaucratic inefficiency or the bureaucratic inaction you know and for me bureaucratic inefficiency or bureaucratic inaction is also part of a political imaginary at the district that's very important to understand and that the mal malfunctioning that we often hear in terms of corruption siphoning and so on and so forth at the district and the sub district level is not entirely administrative but also political that's the that's something that we need to keep in mind and you can see here you know one chart you can see where i'm looking at uh, you know um, presentations you know in terms of uh, district jalpaiguri bagalkot tiruvannamalai cni nagor and gaya you know so you can see a wide uh, Uh, you know length and breadth of the country i have tried to present here and in terms of sc participation st participation and also also women participation and average percentage per household you know i mean like if you have worked with nrga and i remember my days as member of the central employment guarantee council where our focus was more on increasing the average average days in the districts and also in the state you know i was also member of the administrative excellence committee Uh, looking after nrg implementation in various parts of the country for several years you know and that is where you know we developed this index of equity you know to map the dif different districts uh, across these variables you know csp variable uh, women participation variable average days person and also you know uh, household average household number of household getting 100 days employment uh, and also the average spending so what you are looking at here you know i'm not looking at in terms of you know financial spending but when it comes to nrg and assessing comparative assessment nrg implementation in various parts of the country the bureaucratic view at the center or at the state level is uh, you know number of days you know and also spending you know but if in my presentation and there are other indicators you know equity indicators So let me begin with Delpai Gori. So, so you get a sense of what I'm going to talk about. You know, so you look at Delpai Gori. So you, you can see that Delpai uh, Gori, uh, you know, participation. You look at uh, and and here is you know there is a there is a paradox you can see here in the districts analysis. So when I present the data, you will find in some districts which I consider you know good districts, but there if you look at um, the average days, you know. is is not very high but there are other things which make uh, the district very significant and interesting and makes the performance of the districts uh, quite comparable to other districts you know. so and also based on you know my own personal visit to the district you know rapid ethnography and rapid uh, observation that i did you know lasting over you know two three days on an average uh, so you can see that uh, you know how i'm trying to capture the full realities through rapid ethnography or rapid qualitative uh, surveys that i have done here 
so uh, jalpaiguri is a very interesting case you know. so let me just first, first explain you uh, jalpaiguri i visited in 2011 you know, so you can imagine uh, jalpaiguri is still uh, still within the context of a social democratic regime you know, as atul kohli uh, in his classic work has pointed out west bengal you like kerala you know so you can see the legacy of social democratic regime you know and here in the jalpaiguri district if you look at uh, the crisis of tea garden laborers uh, so what we found out when i visited there that uh, you know most of the tea garden uh, tea gardens had closed down uh, because of the heavy losses etc etc and if you are familiar with the structure uh, and the operational guidelines of nrga implementation it it is only done on public land you know so available only on public land not on the private land you know so that is where our our variable of innovation uh, mattered here you know because the district officials and especially the collector took the lead lead in expanding energy implementation to tea gardens tea plantation you know and you can see how uh, you know uh, and 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 there is a there is a puzzle here why did district you know extend something that was not part of the original nrg you know and that is where the state leadership uh, political leadership administrative leadership uh, worked with the national you know central government uh, and especially ministry of rural development uh, and got the approval you know to extend uh, extend nrg implementation to the closed town shut down you know tea gardens uh, and tea plantations uh, and it is where you know and and this pressure was coming from 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 the local this pressure came from two sources that i found out one one from the litigation that went to the supreme court you know based on you know the right to food campaign you know the activists really brought the attention of the supreme court to the closure of big gardens and also uh, of the families suffering you know the laborers suffering out of the closure of the tea gardens and secondly also with the local trade unions you know they really effectively you know mobilized themselves uh, and pressed the local you know bureaucracy you know and the local and the local bureaucracy led by young is official you know a direct is official uh, set up the lead you know, set up the lead in implementing and extending nrg nrg i'm making sure that uh, the implementation of nrg takes care of the food security of the laborers and also the livelihood issues of the laborers i visited you know several uh, you know tea gardens there tea plantations there and and found out uh, that this was this was very important uh, you know initiative although although if you look at uh, you know number of work days uh, because it was done in a very limited context uh, of only on tea plantations or tea gardens you know so therefore we really need, needed to look at you know how this initiative particularly you know qualifies for excellence you know innovations you know and at the same time you know looking at how and this is where dispersed autonomy you know this is where first time i encountered this idea that state is not transcendental capacity is not transcendental capacity is not given you know so you have to look at the field reality and then you have to look at how within and within that context you know it state also works in a limited context very effectively but in other parts of the district it state continues with the old legacies the old legacies of corruption inefficiency etc etc so uh, this is here um, uh, and i also also uh, uh, you know one thesis that i am talking about these day what i call bureaucratic payoffs you know i call it reputational advantage for the, for the last mile bureaucracy it is not something that is widely recognized in the literature that bureaucrats like politicians are also driven by some incentive structures <coughs> the 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 reputational advantage so so to last my law officials you know i can't give you details of all the conversations here and and the, and 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 the, and the observations here but in a nutshell and in a stylized manner i would say that most you know block level officials led by led by a dynamic collector you know dynamic dc and is officer realize the significance of mg and mg narega it's a highly visible project you can imagine in the in the context of the national welfare uh, program 
and also it's a legitimacy enhancing project you know compared to other projects uh, done by the districts you know so that is where uh, they succeeded secondly now you know after my brief uh, uh, presentation of uh, dalbai godi uh, case you know the tea garden case uh, and i i come to hear uh, this tiru vanmalai tamil nadu Tamil Nadu, uh, like Kerala, is widely covered in the welfare literature. So I will skip that part. And here I will, you know, once again, if you look at uh, literature, welfare literature on Tamil Nadu, you know, of late people are talking about why Tamil Nadu succeeds in welfare. It is because of subnational, you know, a sense of uh, cohesion, a sense of, you know, uh, a sense of subnational solidarity. But when I look at you know, I, I I admire that thesis you know, this is probably works at the at the state level. But when you look at you know intra intra district variation, it doesn't work out very well. I mean, like so if you look at why some districts in Tamil Nadu do better than other districts, I come back to my last mile thesis and disperse autonomy thesis you know and disperse capacity you know. Rather than what Megadal calls integrated domination, you know, so welfare programs uh, is not a case of integrated domination, you know, but welfare programs in different parts of the country reflects, uh, you know, dispersed case, you know, a dispersed case of uh, struggles with different groups, you know, and dispersed case of state autonomy. Too. So here, here in this employment generation, if you look at the Milanadu, has always been, you know, known for. you know uh, good welfare so if you look at uh, uh, look at here uh, number of sc participants and sc participants and women participants and and also you know you look at uh, average percentage here it's quite uh, quite significant here you can look at you know 57 59 you know those who have worked on narega and if you have worked at narega from a bureaucratic uh, perspective we always tell that in the districts if they implement uh, uh, more than 50 days of average work in narega that's quite out of standing you know it's not exceptional you know except in northeastern states uh, where they have achieved uh, 70 80 90 days of average work in a particular area, particular year largely because of the homogeneous population and also a small state you know and there are other reasons to probably you know going down to the nature of their bureaucratic regimes in the northeast but here if you look at you know the employment generation data uh, you know and and if you look at uh, now what i'm going to present qualitative and ethnographic idea i visited myself you know from block to block gp to gp and then i found out you know and and that time was interesting from my personal point of view as member of the central employment guarantee council we were busy and making the transition of payment in nrga from from cash payment uh, a uh, hands down payment to 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 the bank and post office payment you know there were some arguments you know there were some concerns about uh, uh, why tamil nadu continues to pay cash payment rather than you know nrga uh, you know live payment to bank or the post office so there were lots of issues you know because the entire country uh, was making a transition to the bank payment you know there were glitches also and those glitches affected the livelihood the uh, livelihoods of the laborers in various parts of the country but here uh, when i went to you know uh, uh, to observe the implementation uh, and looked at the uh, the implementation i found out uh, that uh, the direct cash transfer was not problematic problematic and it's a puzzle you know in various parts of the country and uh, direct cash funds transfer has become a major bone of contention you know people who critique narega always refer to you know siphoning leakage so on so forth you know narega has faced a lot of criticisms you know but on the ground if you look at the implementation this is a revolutionary program you know and by a large free of much of the distortion that we find elsewhere you know i'm not going to mention those programs and the policies of the government you know state government or the central government but here i would restrict myself to uh, to to the beauty of the direct cash transfer you know so not a single wage worker complained to us that there are problems with that uh, how did that happen in the village village after village you know panchayat after panchayat we found we found and here again uh, with, with, because of the limited time i am restricting myself to a live presentation that uh, that we, there was a very intense uh, you know party competition you know and this party competition around the issue of welfare program is very significant you know 
uh, DMK, IDMK, which is fairly well known. And the scholars have captured it uh, as a connection between Petronas politics and welfare politics. Even. So what is what appears to Petronas politics in other parts like Bihar, UP, Odisha, etc., etc. If you look at competitive population, or or in the larger literature, you know, if I have time, I will talk about uh, the clientelistic politics or post clientelistic or programmatic politics. You know. In Tamil Nadu, you find that uh, uh, you know the so-called clientelistic politics, uh, politics, you know, or the Petronas politics is not always, uh, you know, not always, uh, you know, bad for welfare programs. You know, it it is it is here in this connection. Uh, drove the implementation of MG Narega in the district. But that doesn't mean that, uh, uh, you know, it was completely free from all kinds of injustices, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, even in the district, you know, the district we found out uh, where the local, local political struggles were strong and they were structured around the incentives of competitive populism or competitive, uh, you know, competitive clientelism. Uh, the, the, in the district also, there were, you know, Agriculture workers and Dalits have suffered, you know, and uh, on the margins, you know. So we we really captured, you know, like a woman Malika said that, uh, you know, uh, we have had so much expectation from this scheme, but we didn't get, you know, because, you know, somehow what we found out here that the poor benefited from the last mile's effective implementation, but not the ultra poor. You know? So that's something I will come back at the end. You know? It is a very good case of dispersed autonomy of the local state or the local last mile. And again, you know, the Bagel Court, you know, Bagel Court employment generation, once again, uh, looks like quite a fine case if you only go by quantitative data, you know, CST participation, women participation, average percentage per hold, and also household, etc., etc., if you look at, you know. What I'm trying to suggest here that you know, when we work in the committee, we travel across the country and to, to assess comparative implementation of NRT and various districts and then correlate with the local, you know, last mile bureaucracy or the capacity of the last mile bureaucracy. The quantitative indicators are not always very reliable, you know, and that is why it is important to capture the voices from the field, from the districts, you know, in multiple ways. So what we captured here. We just stumbled, you know, a lot of siphoning, a lot of, you know, it's it's a, it's a purely Bagel quote uh, was a case of what I call a tale of bureaucratic and political capture in my large narrative. I'm presenting a, a snippet of uh, a small sample from that narrative, you know, that why it was, a, you know, there were, you know, all kinds of things happening. In fact, uh, uh, you know, local member of parliament was also involved, you know, he was like a local patriarch, you know, running the program in his own way. So that's something quite important, you know, in the panchayat level, you know, there were unauthorized, uh, you know, pro uh, projects being done. Uh, and the district officials uh, were aware of you. Know, they were in collusion, what is called in the literature, collusion, not in collusion. You know, so this, this is a very a clear case of in, in sociological literature or political science literature of capture, you know, captured by 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 the dominant interest groups, you know, bureaucratic and political elite in the districts. So a uh, lot of lot of things we found out, uh, you know, including Katsha attendance, you know, which is called unauthorized attendance, you know, which is which is a source of, you know, a lot of corruptions and distortion in, in the age payment also. And also, you know, also making sure that everybody gets the work in the district. So uh, here, um, uh, when we ask the local official about it, uh, like why you are doing it, uh, sort of, uh, you know, implementation, you know, where you are following the dictates and the directives from the political elite, you know, who have no, who have a very different interest, you know, because they go by their own constituency interest, uh, or or in a clear case of clientelistic implementation. Um, they explained it, you know, because uh, there is also, if you work with the district officials, uh, especially in the NRT implementation, they are always under, you know, this administrative pressure of uh, performance, you know. The key term that we found out is perform or perish, you know. And that is why they called it, uh, you know, administrative convenience uh, and many informal ways of ensuring efficiency in implementation. So next time, when you look at uh, a very solid, robust, uh, you know, quantitative indicator, I think you need to hit the road, go to the village or the GP and find out what's happening. 
In fact, you know, I, I cited C is a PPT. Where to complain? Where to complain? I mean, like it is in Bagel Court. Uh, we found out uh, that uh, it's not the same. Uh, but the same, uh, you know, in Jalpaiguri, the last mile bureaucracy was 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 motivated either by reputational advantage or bureaucratic payoff, or or motivated or forced to act because of the local grassroots presses, trade unions, uh, or you know or litigation by the right to food activist but here nothing was happening the district uh, we didn't get any any voice from from the district also it doesn't mean that uh, you know uh, and there was no social mobilization there was no uh, pressure but this was not enough enough to make the difference uh, uh, to the to the mechanisms uh, of the implementation people suffered now, Sioni, you know, Madhya Pradesh, you know, let's come from Tamil Nadu to Sioni. It's very interesting because here is a very different political regime. You know. People who worked on welfare regimes and typologies uh, of late, you know, and all kinds of typologies uh, and the regimes we have worked uh, in the worked out in the literature, you know, ever since as being Anderson, you know, propounded uh, his three worlds of welfare, you know, systems. Uh, uh, people like uh, John Harris and others, you know, Kohli and so on and so forth. Uh, recently, my colleagues like Louis Tillian and so on and so forth and pronouncing, they have also looked at, uh, you know, state level welfare regimes. You know. When you come from, you know, uh, Tamil Nadu, known for welfare program and mobilization of the lower caste here in MP, you know, here you find, uh, you know, BJP government here and uh, Often, uh, you know, a right-wing government uh, or uh, or Hindutva government, you know, if I am permitted to use the term Hindutva welfare, you know, there is a category or typology, you know, if it is possible, I'm just dropping, you know, for the sake of curiosity. So here, uh, if, uh, MP and Chhattisgarh, if you look at uh, uh, their NRGA, you know, despite, you know, despite uh, a limited uh, elite, uh, you know, base, uh, but it did well, you know, it did well. But here in the in the Sioni, what I found out, what I found out uh, that um, if you look at once again, you know, the quantitative ind indicator, it looks very fine. It looks that everything is hunky dory, things are going fine. So when we hit the field and found out, when we went there, we discovered that uh, the district is suffering, you know, and the poor tribals are, uh, are the most suffering lot in the implementation. Although the district, you know, if you look at in terms of the program implementation structure or bureaucratic structure, you know, they really went ahead and tried to try to upgrade, upgrade what we call bureaucratic assets, you know, in terms of implementing the program. You know. So on the one hand, if you look at uh, look at the capacity of the state here, you find that energy, you know, across. I'm making a tall claim here, or maybe. A sweeping remark here that NRG has really helped the district administration in the country in terms of upgrading bureaucratic assets and bureaucratic capacity of the district. So here, you know, the base payment compared to Tamil Nadu was done through banks and post office. Here. And this was quite remarkable, you know, given given the history of the district here, uh, it was quite a novel practice, you know. But the wage seekers, you know, reported uh, what they called small bribes, uh, you know, or 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 speed money at the post office. You know, I personally went uh, post office to post office, you know, GP to GP, and found merit in their grievances. Uh, and it is here where the you know there was a collusion between the local power groups. You know, uh, these power groups are not very powerful power groups. If you look at the literature, you know, these are not like you know big feudals. Uh, uh, or big corporates here. These are smaller people here involved in a small things, you know, like the post office head. Uh, this, but, but they are in collusion with the last mile officers, you know. And because of this collusion, you know, uh, master rules were not properly filled, you know, social audit was not happening, you know, and, and also signatures uh, or thumb impression of basicers were never not taken, you know. So there were several distortions, uh, and you can see, you know, open and rampant. Uh, kind of situation of, you know, of distortion, you know, uh, if not corruption as such. Uh, and that really impacted uh, mostly tribals, you know, mostly tribals, you know, not the non-tribals. You know. So this is where uh, we found out that, uh, you know, once again, tribals and uh, here, uh, you know, I captured uh, for your, uh, your 
clarity here chaturbhuj you know the voice of agriculture liberation yeah? so this is where uh, you know uh, uh, my sense was uh, that all the good things happened you know last mile officials succeeded in scaling up the employment program and also upgraded administrative infrastructure but the beneficiary you know and, and the people you know the wage seekers were not benefited as much by then come to nagor district uh, nagor district i will take a couple of minutes you know allow me to and here you will find uh, Once again, in the quantitative indicators, it's quite high and robust. You know. If simply, if you look at, uh, you know, here you will find the, you know, women here. You know. It's a Rajasthan case. Those who are familiar with the uh, feminine-related works in Rajasthan or M cases in Rajasthan, not a surprise, you know, in Rajasthan. You know, and also if you look at average uh, percentage, you know, so it looks like, uh, you know, purely on indicators, you know, quantitative indicators, it's a good case, you know. but when we hit the case we found the entire bureaucracy you know in fact the the local dc you know i don't want to comment uh, anyone's uh, uh, you know by name but the lo local bureaucracy was sufficiently or sufficiently captured by local dominant caste local dominant caste you know. and in the district you know although in various parts of rajasthan in cases you know in cases is 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 probably credited is credited with giving us an nrta but paradoxically in the district their influence was very limited i was told that uh, district officers created obstacle to their you know mobilization in the district so that's that's something um, uh, didn't work in favor of the laborers and the beneficiaries of it there was high spending on nrg in nagor you know nagar and we also found several cases but this high spending on nrg does not ex explain the low equity especially you know uh, the, the participation of dalits uh, or mobilization of dalits uh, or giving nrg you know assets to dalit households you know we detected uh, that dalit were quite marginalized uh, in the implementation you know, because of the dominance by uh, the caste you know the jat caste was quite dominant uh, in the bureaucracy also at the or at the block level and also the panchayat level so this is something uh, quite interesting to keep in mind uh, that uh, the nature the nature of the last mile is also rooted uh, into 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 the into the class caste uh, incentive structures at the district level and it does impact uh, it does impact uh, impact uh, the implementation leading to heterogeneous outcomes in various parts of the country finally the gaya district uh, you know you heard about uh, uh, you know uh, once again you know uh, we visited after you know uh, the new chief minister had taken over and in the second i guess you know 10 uh, 2010 uh, he had again come back to power and we were expecting gaya has a very unique case uh, you know because in the history gaya is also known for a mobilization of dalits uh, uh, dalit mosars uh, in the gaya district and also uh, naxal mobilization in fact uh, when i went uh, there you know on a personal note uh, uh, those days were the days of green hunt you know green hunt people uh, my students sometimes realize them uh, tell me that sir your memory is quite fine but maybe um, i have not um, you know my memory is also short so this is called operation green hunt you know a state sponsored paramilitary operation so when i landed and reached the district uh, on the very day on the road i encountered uh, this operation going on you know against the so called maoist gorillas or the naxal in the region so you can look at you know how how the very context of the radical mobilization of rural poor and the implementation of nrt so that's the context you know and that really you know impacted the last mile bureaucracy you know Uh, despite their you know long history of mobilization against the local mahan and the priest you know participants and of dalits in gaya district in nrg was surprisingly you know. and we also found out uh, you know through our block visits you know i went to barachatti uh, barachatti is a very historic block you know where vinoba bhave also campaigned japri jp also campaigned you know and you know the, the interesting thing that i want to share with you and then i will stop that there was no synergy between the historic mobilizations uh, you know partly because of the you know extreme nature of the mobilization you know, by the so called naxal that could be one reason and secondly the legacies of mobilization uh, did not translate into putting a strong pressure on the district officer to perform and so you can see 
uh, it was very surprising case maybe for your curiosity you know nrga was being implemented when our statistic administrator where is nrga located you know it was still located into what they call in hindi gopaniya shaka this is a british colonial term means confidential section so you could imagine that despite we are becoming in the welfare literature by 2010 a policy paradise you know there was so much discussion about bihar you know it's still conundrum in the last manuscript i'm trying to trying to discuss and decode you know why a state like bihar you know you know trying to make a transition from clientelistic regime to programmatic regime did not pay much attention to nrg a very radical program for empowering empowering you know poor and marginalized so finally you know i'm here here uh, the evidence of the imp uh, implementation uh, confirms uh, you know our thesis uh, that it is politicization that provides the driving force for redistribution for um, politics and supplicates the, the, the realization of social rights this also explains the regional and local variation what i'm trying to capture here through six case studies the regional and the local variations and how mechanisms of outcomes are realized so therefore even social democratic welfare states like kerala and tamil nadu witness substantial variation in the implementation of welfare program across districts and finally i would suggest that our our empirical uh, study or, or or the material that we have put together here for your the uh, presentation challenges both status and 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 society centered explanation of heterogeneous divergent welfare outcomes in poor democracies in fredas thank you very much thanks a lot ashwini it was so the, the canvas was large and thank you very large you know uh, chandan my my apology because no, in no, the large no, manuscript no. i have you know uh, many, no, many book, you know was about it's large but uh, detailed at the same time so it 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 was uh, it, it gave us a glimpse of the, the the inner concerns of the research um and the and the and the texture of the sort of research curiosity um Ashwini, let me just look at the comments box to see um, what questions they might be. I how can how can I see the comment box here? You know? I I see. No, 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 I see no, 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 no. Ashwini, no, no. Let, let it appear on the screen so that the viewers can also see it. I uh, just want this one second. Um. yeah uh, but, but this is a very interesting question you know mates you call mate you know and uh, i'm a great fan you know at chandan has uh, uh, introduced when i while while he was introducing me as as uh, as a poet also uh, i'm a great fan of ak ramanujam I, i i just missed him at chicago you know so uh, mate is you know uh, in kannada literature uh mate is you know where rivals are meeting and mating you know i'm quoting you know just to just to bluff you and that there is a sense of ak ramanacham here too uh, coming back to you know nrg and the welfare program mates are not like that the great uh, you know sense of kannada in the medieval time the mates are you know people uh, normally mates are recruited from the liberals you know uh, and the way seekers uh, Way seekers, you know, and the uh, and let's tell you the mate mate is uh, actually a, what I would like to call a para para last mile official, you know, para is kind of uh, largely the identity of a mate uh, is a liberal identity, you know, but its job is to its job is to uh, take the record on the site. Now maintain the minister role, uh, you know the so-called kacha and uh, you know pakka minister role, etc., uh, etc. Et These are like you know, and also mates are important in terms of work measurement. Work measurement is crucial for your payment. So uh, mates are important. Mates are important. But in my ten years of research, you know, and travel across twenty-two states in India and 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 many districts across and blocks. in india i would say that mates are not problem 
mates are mates are not the not the key you know i would say the the, the key implementers implementers i call it troika troika panchayat secretary or the sar panchayat secretary sarpanch and then you have uh, the engineer you know assistant engineer so if you look at three persons you know i call troika i think you can understand nrta so the, in the good district in good district and the bad district if you do a comparative assessment you will find the district collector or or the person assigned with the responsibility of overseeing the implementation in the district clearly knows you know who is the troika and how is the troika working in good districts uh, troikas are uh, you know uh, under supervision and they are constantly guided hand holded and they are also you know because troikas are important because uh, they are part bureaucratic and part political you know so that is the point you know i call it nodal point where politics meets bureaucracy not the mat middle thank you i hope it answers your query um ashwini uh, you mentioned michael mans work um, you know his interest in 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 theorizing the state as something that does not have any rivals to a you know for rivals uh, on the question of sovereignty at the local levels right that's that is a that is a fully formed modern state now so, so there's a concern with citizenship there clearly for them uh, you know for michael mann as a theorist of liberal democracy uh, citizenship is secure when the state does not have rivals on the local uh sites now how do you examine the, the, i mean the work done by the last mile bureaucracies uh in relation to uh, the experience of citizenship uh you know is is something happening there i mean uh, in because this is indeed a welfare you know politics being rooted through bureaucracy and you asked us to focus on the lower echelons to look at effectiveness or the lack thereof um but what what does effective delivery do in terms of uh, you know uh, you know in in terms of forming their experiences as political uh, subjects or citizens chandan this is a very interesting observation uh, if you remember i started out uh, contesting uh, recognizing and contesting my yes. mass infrastructure yes. uh, because infrastructural state is uh, Uh, pretty much rooted into our middle class consciousness also so even yes. if in mumbai something happens yes. you know or something doesn't happen people blame that oh no you don't have enough bureaucratic infrastructure you know yes. you know so that this is where you know in low income settings or what is called uh, i call it you know low income settings for high citizenship countries you know high citizenship democracies you know and this is where democratic uh, theorists need to revise uh, Uh, their own understanding and look at india not as a case of a failure but as a success hmm. case of high citizenship but low hmm. state capacity hmm. but the hmm. question that i am you know investigating here through a decadal research that michael mann is important but not crucial in the various parts of the country so when you travel from here to cion is not yeah. is not very important you know what is important here and if you look at putting rani kotari the politicization you know and there are two two key terms i am using my large manuscript you know the patterns mm-hmm. of politicization and the degree of politicization chandra i think mm-hmm. students of politics and sociology and welfare literature need to pay attention to you know patrick heller has pointed out that kerala succeeded why kerala succeeded because of the patterns of politics and the degree of democracy within kerala at the grassroots level so if you come from chandan if you travel with me let's travel you know come from here to gaya you know. and there i on the road i'm founding michael mans infrastructure estate you know with armed vehicle you know attacking the naxals you know preventing me from going to the village don't go don't go and after that operation was done we visited people were complaining about nrg and food security so this is like you know what i call the, the politicization you know india succeeds and if indian districts are still performing it's because of that politicization and the degree you know degree of politicization explains the variation in the welfare outcomes 
That's my last question. Rashmi, thank you. Um, on the question of politicization, uh, do you feel a need to taxonomize the category a little further? Because, <laughs> because, because we know that the very same mechanisms of you know interventions can undercut many, many other laws. We know the, the hopeless performance of the Prevention of Atrocities Act is largely yeah. due to uh, how the you know, elected representatives interact with the police, etc. So I'm just wondering, in in, in the interest of a you know, <laughs> the more comprehensive grasp of this phenomenon. Uh, but then if you if you if you if you forgive my sins, you know, and then I would suggest something. You know, what yeah. has happened? You know, there is some some myopia here in the welfare literature. You know? yes. So you're right. So uh, how many times, you know, I think, uh, you know, other than Atul Kohli, who used the language of class, you know, or used yeah. the language of CPM. I look at how 2010, you know, CPM got decimated in its own, you know, fort. And when I went to the field, you know, the same CPM comrades were, you know, now in the, you know, green, you know, like <laughs> painted TMC offices and doing exactly the same thing. So my suggestion here, largely the welfare, uh, heterogeneous welfare outcomes have been seen from welfare typologies, you know, regime typologies. Yes, yes. Uh, so, um, uh, and in the regime typology, in the regime typology, and then, you know, uh, if you look at uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to look at, uh, you know, bureaucratic interest structure and the political infrastructure of elected politicians, you know, blame yes. them, blame them, you know, chop them. But they are the people who are on the ground. I mean, like, a democracy cannot survive, we cannot flourish in the districts of India without our elected representatives, you know. So there, what I'm suggesting here, you know, what I'm looking at through the explanation of heterogeneous outcomes in the districts of India is how, how bureaucratic interest or reputational interest and politicians' re-election interest collide and work and synergize. So there is another, you know, in my in my last narrative, uh, I'm talking about, uh, you know, look at the case that I presented, Chandan, a Bhagalkot case. Bhagalkot, I'm, I don't want, you know it better than me, you know, uh, who was he? I'm, I don't want to name him. But he worked more as, a, you know, someone uh, who was interested in his own dominance you know, rather than implementing the program. So taxonomy, I will put on hold for a while and look mm -hmm. at more, you know, once again, politicization of the citizenship. And it synergies with the last mile officers. Yeah. It's very reflected in my case studies. Yeah. One more question, then we'll go on to the audience questions. I see two of them. Uh, the synergy, I mean, it's interesting to hear you say that there was an absence of synergy between the old mobilizations, social mobilizations, and the bureaucracy. Uh, and, and you also mentioned the MKSS, which is which I suppose is a new mobilization. Yeah. And that you know that has worked, you know, to you know to help. In the officers become a little more alert and active in how things are implemented. So, do, do, you, do you have a do you have a sense of why that may be? Why I mean, are the old traditional mobilizations routinized and effectively uh, not? Uh, you know, have they have they been defanged? I mean, how do you understand this? I think the quick answer to this, you know, the Tamil Nadu case, you know, Tiruvannamalai case, you know, um, in Tiruvannamalai case, uh, what we discovered, uh, and 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 I can go on talking about similar cases elsewhere, where the political competitive structure, uh, you know, is powerful enough or popular enough, you know, like in the case, you know, so the old mobilization strategy of political parties in Tamil Nadu ensures good outcomes in the welfare program. On the other hand, if you go back, uh, particularly if I come, coming to Bihar or UP or Odisha and elsewhere, uh, we find that the old social movements uh, or old movements uh, have either been, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm looking for a better word, uh, uh, rather moderated uh, or disappeared, or, or there is a lack of the new kind of social mobilization. Because mm -hmm. the the movements, movements, the older movements are not fairly articulated to the new generation of politics. Mm -hmm. And the new generation of politics, let me go back to Scotch Paul, you know, citing Scotch Paul. What she famously pointed out, 
that it's not only uh, politics creates policy, but policy creates its own politics. Yes. So that's we have to remember, you know, MKS has created yeah. its own politics. So yeah. in the region where MKS is a strong Chandan, and I realize, you know, because of the transparency regime, accountability regime, and bureaucrats, you know, keep telling us that, look, you know, we are also fine. I mean, like, uh, you know, there are other things they don't worry about it, but here, in what I call dispersed autonomy rather than integrated domination. So then, you know, this is my theoretical innovation. I'm looking at, uh, you know, Indian state more in terms of dispersed autonomy rather than the integrated domination. That comes from European, you know, analysis and the history. Yeah, thank you, Ashwini. On, on, before I move to the questions of the audience, you know, I couldn't, uh, I can't help uh, recalling Bhikkhu Parekh's very um, fascinating uh, observation that in India, um, you know, which is often seen as a state with, with an imperfect sovereignty. Uh, he says that India actually shares sovereignty. And I thought that yeah. was a very interesting uh, formulation. And uh, <laughs> as opposed to a state which has a monopoly over it, that, which is a That's model. Secondly, you know, Chandan, Chandan, you know, before we move into, one thing that, you know, I wanted to suggest again and again through my research here, that the idea of sovereignty is a political idea. It's not an economic idea. Yes. So if you look at you know if you look at European experience of the welfare state, it's largely determined by patterns of economic development, sequences of economic development. Unlike India, that is why for yeah. me politicization is important, not yes. the economic development. Yes. Yeah. So we have a question um, from the audience. A student, Arti Tavade. Just one second. Praveen, can you put the question on the screen? Yeah, I would like to see. Let me read it out for you, Ashwini. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, Chandan, please. Um, the question is, please. how and to what extent the formation of unions of NRE yeah. workers will help in ensuring effective policy outcomes? Can I be very candid here? You know, I'm mean, like, I know that uh, it's being recorded and live streamed. You know, uh, Arti, I, I must tell you that uh, in 2011 12, um, uh, I was again a committee of the member. You know, like, uh, those were the days, you know, when uh, social welfare program was up in the sky, you know, and what people call new welfare architecture in India was coming up. In fact, I sincerely, sincerely, and uh, seriously presented a proposal proposal to form a union of NRGA workers across the country, across the country. And if you look at history of, uh, you know, employment guarantee scheme in Maharashtra, uh, which is considered, you know, like, uh, you know, inspired NRGA across the country, Maharashtra employment guarantee scheme. So you are absolutely right uh, uh, that this, this kind of a union, MKSS is also a union. It's a people's union. And that is where I will go back to Chandan's, you know, uh, very insightful observation that uh, the difference between the new union and the old union. If you look at uh, the, you know, uh, the MKSS is not funded by any corporate, uh, not, you know, getting anything from any, you know, recognized political party. It's a people's, you know, initiative entirely, bottom up people's initiative. And here, uh, uh, my own sense is that if, uh, if what I try to present uh, here in my Jalpaiguri case, there were like, you know, established trade unions. And given the circumstances uh, of closure of the tea gardens uh, and the global tea crisis, uh, they decided to go for innovation. So these unions matter. But the question is that will Narega have a national or pan-union? or Narega will continue to be implemented across the country uh, in different ways, uh, through different kinds of unions, you know. To sum up your uh, to, to question, Arti, I would suggest in many parts, you know, many parts of the country, uh, there is a sense of unionization. There is a sense of, you know, transparency struggle. There is a sense of, you know, accountability. And we have seen the correlation where the transparency movements are strong, like Badawani, you know, same Madhya Pradesh, then Naregad as well. So that's the, you know, and this is where last mile bureaucracy's effectiveness, not the Michael Mann's infrastructural estate matters, you know, if it's rooted into that synergy. 
Yeah, Thank you. Please, uh, Sham Kashyap has a question. Uh, I'll read it out for you again. And since Praveen doesn't seem, to, I think he's lost the internet connection. He says. Yeah, 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 yeah. The question is: uh, Do you think that the MGNREGA has been successful? Oh, there it is. Has been successful in influencing MLA elections. Oh my God, um, Sham, uh, you, you are getting me, getting me into difficult zone. Uh, I will speak to Chandan directly. Uh, Chandan, this is called uh, uh, in political science and sociology re-election thesis. Uh, re-election thesis. You know, in fact, uh, um, you know, look at the, if you look at uh, 2009 data or 14 data. Uh, I'm, I'm back here, <laughs> Chand, you know, Sham. So if the Congress lost in 2014, not because of me or NRG, you know, and if they won 2009, it's not because of, you know, NRG. The short and simple answer uh, is here, uh, based on, again, you know, district level and uh, and, and, and sub-district level analysis and, uh, and evidence that local MLAs, uh, and the MPs are increasingly became, becoming sensitive to NRGA payoff. They look at NRGA favorably. In fact, in 2016, when there was an uproar in the parliament about limited NRGA, the BJP government backtracked only because its own MLAs and you know, MPs requested this national government not to limit NRGA. Because as compared to other programs, let me just give you authoritatively that NRG has become a really very favorable program, you know, from both the last mile bureaucracy and also uh, also the politicians pay off, reputational pay off. Um, I, can't, I can't say that uh, it, it will help you win elections. You know, that I can't say. Ashwini, uh, during the course of your talk, you mentioned the innovation initiatives or innovative initiatives of the last term bureaucrats. I mean, so how do you explain this? What, what I mean, how, you know, what is this? Yeah, I, I explained that, you know. So let's come back to once again, you know, in, in the ethnographic and empirical case we presented from Talpai Guri. You know, if you just go to the operational guidelines and the act of NRGA, and I go on repeatedly because I was involved in several committees, uh, you know, helping to broad base uh, and make it more robust, uh, you know, act and the program. You know. Nowhere does it mention that it can be, you know, implemented on, you know, private lands, except, uh, you know, category four works. You know. So if you belong to marginal farmer, SCST, or land reforms, beneficiary, so on and so forth, and then, then, then your land, on your land, we can extend NRG implement. That's the official, you know, governance structure, you know, or 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 what we call governmentality structure in the NRG implementation. Innovation comes, you know, uh, look at Jalpai Guri, but the districts innovated. You know, they exactly knew that the, the, the tea gardens belong to the private parties. You know. And because of the conflict between the trade unions and the private operators, you know, what happened, they fled away, shut down the tea garden without realizing you know, what would happen to the laborers, you know, they would die. They, you know, then that when I went there, there was a serious case of food security. And it's widely reported and Supreme Court picked up the case of, you know, starvation deaths, you know. Even in this kind of volatile, you know, political and social situation, the bureaucrats innovated. They approached the Central Employment Guarantee Council through the, you know, state government, allowing them to take the implementation to the tea garden with, with qualifications that not for tea plucking, you know, only for the land leveling, you know. Chandan, so here is the innovation. You, know. you got it. So you did category for Chandan. I remember because I was involved in the debate in the council yes. and in the meetings. Yes. And I found it very, you know, like a bureaucratic innovation. Yes. And there are, you know, and also, if, you know, if you look at case of Sikkim, you know, look at Rajasthan, you know, there were many bureaucrats, you know, last mile officials. Uh, um, they used IT technology. They, they they also built, you know, and encouraged local labor groups, you know. In fact, you know, if you look at uh, uh, Vijay Kumar and others in Andhra Pradesh, you know, the only, you know, I guess the most powerful, uh, you know, rural development bureaucracy insulated, insulated from powerful interest. They innovated a lot. In fact, the whole idea of social audit that MPS has experimented on the ground was taken up by Andhra and implemented.
So those are innovations. A lot of innovations happen. So when we travel, you know, and look at you know district level variations, we try to link it. You know how how conventional bureaucrats. In fact, uh, one of the reviewers on my manuscript commented uh, that how do you look at uh, you know conventional bureaucrats and the new generation bureaucrats? The question that you have been asking about trade unions. Yes. So the new generation bureaucrats are more in more innovation oriented. Or more innovation oriented. Uh, Ashwini, um, the, the, you wanted the district. I mean, you saw the district is unit of analysis, and the district manage, magistrate or the deputy commissioner is initiator of the action. Uh, so it's typically an IS, usually an IS officer. Have, were you able to detect the smoothness or the non-smoothness of relations based on someone working from a central, you know, CADA? Civil services and then the local civil services, you know, having to you know, there's always a little bit of a you know a friction there. I mean, the, the, I mean uh, no, not friction. I mean, I'm just trying to look at you know how, in terms of attachment, right? Attachment to an issue or not? I mean, local familiarity and non-familiarity. How, how do these you know the the grassroots people are in, more intimate than an officer above who who could be logically idealistic. Anyway, I'm just trying to get a sense for how you saw the relations unfold. No, Chandan, you really beautifully captured, you know, what you said about, you know, uh, uh, the frontline officer. You know. uh, yeah. District collector is certainly uh, the most important functionary here because he's uh, the district program coordinator, you know, DPC. If you look at the act, in fact, when the act was uh, being made, uh, uh, a lot of us were, you know, like coming from civil society, never wanted to assign this function to the district collector, you know, the traditional steel frame bureaucracy. But I remember, you know, without quoting and naming them, you know, the top bureaucrats, you know, what they told us uh, rather significantly that if the implementation is in the hand, at least notionally on the paper, there is a sense of, you know, vertical accountability by the top bureaucrat and there is a Habermasian legitimation here. Because you know the process is renewed, you know, in democracy. So the bureaucrat is responsible, you know, from the center, he's assigned. And also, third, the salience of the program. So if the district magistrate is not involved in the program, the program suffers. Come to, you know, uh, you see, Narega has become really a meta program, uh, a program very significant. So ICDS or lactating mothers, you know, they, these programs get neglected. Coming back to your question, Chandan, uh, you know, the relationship, what I observed uh, in the good districts, I'm coming back. In the good districts, uh, the relationship between the district collector as the as the chief uh, operating officer of the program or somebody who is politically and bureaucratically responsible for the program. In fact, I have seen in the offices of the collector, you know, local MLAs, uh, local politicians rushing to the collector's officers and asking that collectors are why my people are not getting an RTA work. And the collector is picking up the phone and asking the local video, what is happening there? Why don't you give them work? And if there is no work, I remember under the section 10, we were authorized to open the work. In fact, I sat under the tree and then, and I used that clause to open the work, and then the local officials took it up. So, in the good districts, in the good district, I think the relationship is less tensile you know, and the less frictional. You know, you know see, uh, but you have to look at you know uh, because district collectors are normally you know posted for two years or sometimes less than two years. And if the district has a, you know, good administrative legacy, you know, and the experience, and you are right, um, because collectors can go and come, but these block development officials and these these sarpanches and and these assistant, uh, you know, engineers, they continue there. So the important thing here for a for a collector or the DPC is to ensure ensure that they are more transparent, they are more accountable. And they are regularly monitored by by local social groups you know, or, or local you know social workers. You know. That's very important. So there is no no fixed relationship between between the DPC and other officials in the district context. Okay, um, uh, there's a question that will appear on the screen just now uh, by a colleague. Uh, he's a linguist, Giridhar Rao. 
His question is, what percentage would you say are good districts? Oh, very, very interesting. I mean, like, you know, uh, I hope uh, my, uh, my uh, Giri Rao has, uh, you know, I will send him a couple of my poems for his analysis. You know, look at the word structure <laughs> and the lyric structure. Giri, you know, but the reason is here. If, if I go by standard positivist sociology, uh, I would say that uh, uh, my sense, my sense was, I think, I don't know what has happened uh, these days, but my sense was that if by any chance you look at uh, national performance index, you know, and if you are more than, you know, 50 days average, you know, average 50 days in a state, in a district, I'm, I'm going by, you know, uh, by, by what, you know, Mr. Yugandar once told me that if you can perform more than 50 days, actually you are doing fine. As a district elected. So 50 days was our benchmark, you know. Uh, but then uh, coming back here, but there are cases, you know, like when we went to Nalanda, and Nalanda, what we discovered uh, that the local bureaucrat and the district officials went ahead and used Narega in the recharge of the traditional water structures. So there are programs uh, and there are initiatives in Narega where you start improving local you know environment and local land but with the involvement of few levers you know. like in in in, in jalpai Guri, you have fewer days but you have done a remarkable work of saving people from dying out of hunger so uh, we go here and there but as a positivistic answer 50 60 days i would say hmm. Uh, Ashwini, and, the good uh, district, and the good district also, Chandan, based on equity indicators. You know. I think, you know, you have to look at uh, the percentage of Dalit participation, SC, ST participation. And let us not forget uh, that Narega is the only welfare program in the world where there is a affirmative accent. You know. The women must have one third of the participation. Hmm. And if that not ensured, you are not a good district. Fascinating. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, um, you began by saying people uh, link a good welfare delivery systems with a strong state. And you said that there's no logical connection. But can we flip it around? I mean, in the sense that, uh, you know, I mean, in the sense, is, is it the absence of a strong state that is allowing for improvisation at the local level? We I detect a certain romanticism in you in asking. <laughs> My apology, Chandan. My apology, Chandan. I, I think no. there is no romance here. In fact, you know, this is in my large no, it's management. A good, it's a good romance. I mean, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's again, Chandan, you know, it's a citizenship romance, you know, mm -hmm. citizenship, you know. Uh, oh, denial, oh, denial. My teacher used to say that low intensity citizenship and high intensity citizenship. <laughs> India is a case of high intensity citizenship. And therefore, I always request the state theorists to revise their assumptions about the state capacity. Yes. If you look at Africa, if you look at Africa, Latin America, in fact, Mexico, I have closely studied. You know, there you will find in the places, in the local bureaucracy and the frontline bureaucrats, uh, you know, barely you can go as an anthropologist and sit in the office, but things are happening. Things yes. are happening. That's my answer, Chen. Yeah, thank you. Ashwini, I had another question about, uh, you said you, you con con contrasted between high visible programs like MREGA, NREGA, and then a low visible programs like anti-poverty things yeah. as, as being a significant variable in, in relation to the innovation aspect, right? Or I yeah. forget, I, but you... you no, you're right, you're right, absolutely, absolutely. You're fine, Chandan. No, but, but I mean, I, I would like to hear you say more about, you know, what is... Chandan, you know, Chandan, here is the dark story of India's district. You know. I, I've so far explained, you know, both the dark stories and also the brighter side, you know. And I'm going that way, you know. I'm not a systematic, I'm not a, that anarchist, you know, like a Nandi type, you know, uh, who would savage, you know, Indian state. We need Indian state, but not very powerful, as Nandi reminded us, 20 years back, a very strong, powerful state will violate your human rights. Yes. And on the other hand, on the other hand, when I started looking at the sticks, you know, and started traveling, visiting through my ethnographic notes, I found out that the problem is here, you know, and this is not that, you know, this is again Bavarian channel, unintended consequences of the success of NRG. 
Yes. So the bureaucracy, bureaucracy is very rooted these days, rooted these days, and and has become Narega centric. And the consequences in a good place like when NRG is happening, there's a, let's focus on midday meal. Look at the dark side. Here. Dark side. I think you know uh, someone, uh, some of us who work on uh, comparative welfare schemes, we need to really assess comparatively. In the place where NRG is happening fine, is midday happening fine? Is ICDS happening fine? Why, why women and children get low priority in the same district and this program gets a high priority? Becomes, becomes you know, main instrument of legitimation, you know? and main instrument of politicization. Why, you know, midday meal doesn't become, even for a social worker or social movement, a very high visibility mobilizational, you know, a politicization. Why? It, so it myself... Is, absence, yeah. the, is it because of the absence of, you know, uh, you know, financial distribution? I mean, there's no money here in the midday no, no, meal. No, Chandan, Chandan, here, here my sense, you know, what I gathered over time, my gathered over time, there are two reasons I'm, I'm repeatedly, you know, mentioning. The last yes. mile bureaucracy is also a political construction. We know it from Ferguson, you know, we know it from Akhil Gupta's classic work on ICDS yes. and on corruption, you know. So we know it that it is a political construction. Somehow, somehow, you know, in the in the in the thesis, uh, Don Aris and others' thesis of new welfare architecture of India, there is there is a high focus on uh, and the payoff from NRG compared to the, you know, where uh, Amartya Sen and John Dredge keeps reminding us that Kerala is the only state where you find ICD is also doing well, you know, Midday also doing well, and Tamil Nadu to some extent, you know. So there is some beauty in so called clientelistic or patronist democracies, uh, which is which we need to revise. So, in, so the, the the short answer to your uh, complex question and, and that we need we need to look at uh, how how legitimation you know political legitimation happens uh, uh, through even so called you know low visibility programs or low priority programs. Yeah. Yeah. And here, Chandan, you know, reason here, just a second. Here, reasons yeah. happens because what I call dispersed autonomy of the state. You know? Because of the dispersals, and so I looked at this pic, you know, map, and I started asking collectors that look, you know, why why midday is not happening, why ICDS is not happening, even rural electrification is not happening, toilet construction is not happening. But Narega is happening very well, seventy days, eighty days. So here is a puzzle, Chandan. Yeah, yeah. Ashwini, you talked about political legitimation, but if you saw NREGA as as political education. Uh, you know, so how do you view it as far as the uh, intended beneficiaries of that? You know, did you have a chance to, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, excavate this dimension? What has Actually, it done? One, one thing that has happened, you know, now the rural poor, you know, rural poor, if you look at, you know, last year's migrant crisis, you know, when the migrants started going back, uh, and I, I, in fact, in Hindu, Hindu you know, widely publicized piece, uh, talked about, uh, you know, one nation, one Narega. I mean, like, I'm not <laughs> reflecting on some other thing. If you have a job card in Baswada, and if you are a Bihari or Uriya or Bengali worker, why can't you work there? If mm -hmm. you can popularize the idea of one nation, one election, I think this is where radicalization of rural poor has happened. Yes. And we haven't talked about, you know, how, how NRGA has helped, you know, migrant workers in a very yes. big way. So yes. my, 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 my sum and substance of what I want to suggest here, and uh, that, look, uh, uh, NRGA, indeed, indeed, you know, uh, has really, I mean, like, I remember my own piece in Indian Express, uh, you know, is something uh, has altered, has altered the rural landscape and the landscape of agriculture level forever. You can't go back now. Yes. India has changed there. Yes. India has changed there. You, you know, Chandan, you cannot do, you can't do begari, you know, like free labor, and nobody can dictate your labor. Because if the is available, you can always go to the public, uh, you know, employment. So the very the emergence of NRGA as a public employment structure in the rural areas and the districts in India is perhaps 
less studied or understudied in my discipline and also in sociology and anthropology. We need, we need wider discussion about that. Uh, uh, Ashwini, we are almost, uh, we've reached the end of the colloquium, but before concluding, I mean, is there anything you would like to say as something that is, you you shared with us a puzzle just a while back, but is there, is, is there something else intriguing about, you know, you, about what you're looking at that you would still like to give some time to? I think, you know, Chandan, you know, very quickly, three things I would say and take your leave. I, I think yeah. we need to, we need to look at uh, and revise, you know, some of the Western constructs, you know, for instance, the, the idea of clientelistic, uh, you know, welfare program, uh, programmatic welfare programs, we need to revise them. We need to yes. look at how rural poor view these things, you know. Yes. Uh, a, Dalit, a Dalit has to be mobilized you know, through group solidarity. A group solidarity is not a clientelism. Mm -hmm. To Chandan, I would also like to look at, you know, um, quoting again, like, you know, Odenal, high intensity and low intensity citizenship areas in India is understudied. We need to come back instead. Thirdly, I think people uh, in my discipline and elsewhere pay no attention uh, to this last mile welfare or last mile bureaucracy. I think we need more robust research. India is almost a civilization, continental mm -hmm. size. Yes. Uh, to capture it uh, through some kind of imported ideas doesn't serve, doesn't serve. Yes. And finally, you know, all said and done, all said and done, despite everything happening in the country, I see a bright future, bright future uh, uh, for what I call polymorphic welfare regimes. <laughs> <laughs> Ashwini, thank you on that night, but very serious note. Um, uh, you know, thank you again for uh, you know, spending uh, the uh, you know the last hour and a half sharing your research findings. I mean, they really, I mean, the ambition was you know um, was extraordinary. I felt you know in trying to revise the um, you know a, a received notion of the state and sovereignty and bureaucracy and all of which you know um, you know in India will immediately seem like not fitting any of those theories, but we somehow continue to use them. And I'm glad uh, this work. Which is, you know, if it's radicalizing the rural poor, uh, you know, uh, you know, a focus on that process as a means of also re-theorizing these huge constructs would be something that I really look forward to reading. Uh, thank you, Ashwini. Thank you, grateful, Chandan. Grateful to you and your colleagues and your team. Thank you very much, Chandan. Look forward. Yeah. And my gratitude.